How's everybody doing? Kalahi Kiola, you good? <laughs> Hayden? Yeah. Alicia, did you get my emails? Does your email work? Must be because you met me today. So stop it, you two. All right. Just as a friendly reminder, top left hand corner says we're recording. So <laughs> you're like, darn, how do I redo that? Sorry, can't redo it. All righty. You guys have your notes? Let me see your notes. That's your notes. Oh, very good. Very good. Solid. Look at you guys. Nice job. All right. Let's go ahead and take our quiz. In the chat, there is um, a short 20 point quiz. You have 10 minutes. Once 10 minutes is done, I'm going to close out the quiz. So make sure you guys keep track of 10 minutes. Okay. You guys ready? Let me know when you're on and then we'll get started. Give me a thumbs up so I can press start. You may use your notes. So my suggestion to you is to do this. Answer the questions. And if you have extra time, go back and check. Okay. Everybody on? Okay, one, thumbs up, two thumbs up, three thumbs, with a smile. Okay, there might be a smile on the, oh no, that's a thumbs up with a frowny face. All right, go ahead, 10 minutes, go.
some of you guys are done already. So let's go ahead and get into your canvas. If you're done, you basically have one assignment this week. Okay, so go ahead and make a copy of the questions for the next section of reading. And then you guys can start answering um, the question for scene one. You have two and a half minutes left remaining. Kahele Aulani, you have about four minutes left. Alicia, did you check your email? All right, not bad. Okay, I, I will be releasing the scores um, at the end of the day after my period one takes their quiz. Um, I would really appreciate it if you just keep the questions to yourself. Um, this helps me to see what you guys need help with as far as um, if you guys need more support or if this is too easy, blah, blah, blah. All right, 
So let's get started. Um, everybody should be on the Antigone question. So if you get into today's um, <clears throat> today's uh, module or this week's module, let's get into 3.6 Antigone week two. Just a couple reminders of the schedule. Okay, you guys are going to be reading up till line 770 this week. Okay, so that's basically scenes two, three, and four. Okay, we good on that? All right, did you write it down? Okay, let's make sure you do that. Next, you have, um, basically one assignment this week because you should have finished your IXL, should have, yesterday. So thank you guys for showing up today. Um, whew, you guys, there's like a number of you guys who did not do your IXL yesterday for some crazy reason. So we need to make sure that you guys complete your IXL. Um, there shouldn't be any, um, reason why you shouldn't. All right, so did everybody finish making a, cop uh, a copy for uh, questions from scenes two, three, and four? Yes? Okay, so let's go through this. Um, for scene one, you're gonna be listing the events that lead to Antigone's punishment. So why don't we go ahead and um, you're going to use the bullets. Come up with between four and five bullets. Okay, so just start at the very beginning. What happened that led to this, her being punished? Okay, you guys have three minutes, go. Hayden, were you able to get onto the PDF? 
for, for uh, antiquity? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Kahelela, I tried to get in. I downloaded it and sent it to you um, on the email. I got it. I just got it. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. And then Hayden, what did you say that you, you got it? Does everybody have access to it? Okay, good, thank you. Alicia, what about you? You have access to it, Antigone? You can read it, okay. Caleb, you too? Okay. All right. Um, thank you. All right, so uh, let's just go. Let's just go around. I'm gonna call on you guys. You guys just say what what were some of the events. So we're gonna go in order, I guess. Um, let's start with Alicia. What was the first event that that led up to the Antigone being punished? So do you want it from like the beginning when she decided she was gonna do it, or like? Okay, I'll start it. Um, after Oedipus killed, um, was killed or killed himself, um, he left the throne to his sons, Eteocles and Polynesis. Both of them um, died in a battle due to um, Eteocles not relinquishing the the throne to his brother because there was agreement between flipping every other year, sharing the throne. Okay, now go. So what happens after that? They fought and both of them died. Okay, perfect. Then what happened, Hayden? Oh, this crayon guy, he uh, makes this decree that Polynesia shall not be buried because right. he like fought against his own, or he broke, what was the rule he broke the, was that him that broke the every other year rule? Um, Eteocles did. And so Polynesis oh. being exiled comes with an army from the archives. And yeah, so he fought against his own city or whatever. Yeah, the city of? Thebes. Thebes, thank you Thebes. for not saying Thebes. Thebes. Okay. Then Caleb, what happens after that? Very good. Antigone wants to bury her brother, but Ismeni does not want to bury her brother. Okay. So Thank you. Perfect. Very good. Then Kalahikiola. After that, what does what happens after that? Um, the sentry discovers like a powder-like substance over the body, and they don't know who did it. So Creon. Um, he blames it on the sentry guy and says, basically says that if he doesn't catch the person who did it, then he will be, he will take the, the punishment. Very good, right? And then, um, Kahele Aulani, then what? Don't they, um, someone says that it's Antigone. The sentry. 
Remember the sentry is a soldier, right? Um, basically, it's, you know that saying, don't kill the messenger, right? Uh, he, they basically pulled sticks and he got the short end and he had to go tell Creon, right? And Creon's like, somebody paid you, don't act, right? And he's like, no, we just came across it. It's not our fault. Okay, so that's where we're at. All right, so very good. Everybody should have seen one answered in bullet form. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys because I wanna talk to you guys about some things and then we're going to get started with our day. Um, 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 um. So, We have at the end of scene one, right? So if you notice at the end of scene one, the chorus comes into play, right? Um, let's see. Kalahi Kiola, what is the purpose of the chorus? Take a guess. Uh, to tell the story. Okay, the backstory, right? To plug in the pukas, to fill in the gaps, right? But also, it they they serve as kind of the function of I told you so, right? Mm. You should listen, right? So. The choragus is more like the elderly part of the chorus, right? The, the one that has the wisdom, right? And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to share with you this part, right? We have just before the chorus starts on, um, I don't know, for me, it's page 11. Should I check your guys' um, page numbers or whatever? Does it, is it the same? No, it depends on how big I think you make your words. So I don't know. So anyway, it's about line 275 in um, scene one. Can you guys get on there? You're going to need this today, right? So basically, Creon and the Sentry are, are kind of like beefing it out. Like, who paid you? Nobody paid me. This is what happened, right? And then the chorus comes into play, right? The chorus starts off numberless are the world's wonders but none more wonderful than man the stormy gray sea yields to his prowls the huge crest bear him high all right so this was the last question on your quiz everybody see that yeah okay um so i asked you a question on basically what does this mean right who are they talking about Okay, so Hayden, go ahead and, and talk a little bit about this. What is the chorus talking about? Just these three lines. Um. So today is the, we're going to try and pick apart and figure things out. So just guess. I guess we could start with the first line. Numberless are the world's wonders. What the heck does that mean? Yeah. What does numberless mean? No numbers. Yeah. Right. So there's an infinite amount of. Oh, there's an infinite amount of world wonders. Right, wonders of the world, right? So, yeah, if you really think about it, okay? So, you guys paying attention, yeah? Yeah, if you really think about it, there's plenty of amazing things in the world. Okay, look at the next part of this line. But none, but none more, more wonderful, wonderful than man. Yeah. What the heck does that mean, right? 
okay, so yeah, there's plenty of amazing things, but the best is man. Why? Right? It says right there, the stormy gray sea yields to his prowls. Um, let's talk about the symbolism of a stormy gray sea. Okay, so Alicia, what does the stormy gray sea symbolize in general? Problems. Problems. What else? Kalahi Kiola, go ahead and add. Um, hard decisions. My kai. Okay. Caleb, what else? Stormy gray sea. Like obstacles. Very good. Obstacles. And Kahele Alani, what else? Like um, problem. Yeah. If you were to say, yeah, I'm in a stormy gray sea, are you saying that you're having a great day? What are you really saying? Okay. So what is this stormy gray sea and who is in this stormy gray sea in line in, in scene one? Hayden, let's start with you. Um, I, I don't know. Would it be Paul and Nisi's? Because he's he didn't get buried properly okay maybe the huge crest bears him high who are we talking about who is the most powerful in thebes right now crayon crayon stop saying cray crayon it's antigua that's antigon and crayon every year every year no doubt thank you right so crayon right so why would oh gosh you're gonna make me say crayon crayon <laughs> be in a stormy gray sea alicia tell us why would crayon be in a stormy gray sea because he didn't get what he wanted i don't know no, be specific. Be specific. Why? Why? Why is he in a crappy situation? Hmm. Yes, Kalahi Kiola. Because isn't he Antigone's uncle? Okay. So and then what? Alicia, you better be writing this down, girl. Mm. Write it down. Okay, so Creon, King Creon of Thebes, not Thebes, is Antigone's uncle, and what? Why is he in a crappy situation? Because he said that anybody that disobeyed him would die. Right. And so now what does he have to do? He's in a sticky situation. We can use all the, um, the sayings possible, right? He's in a sticky situation. What is that sticky situation, Caleb? He does not want to kill the nephew. Wait, not nephew. What is that called? He doesn't want to kill her. The niece. Yeah, the niece. Yeah. Um, but what if he doesn't kill her? or punish her? What happens if he doesn't? And he's like, he's like going against his word. And he's gonna be labeled as a, like not just king. Right, well, a weak leader, right? So um, let's go into our notes, you guys. Okay, let's write down at the top of that first new page. You guys can um, make sure you add the date. What is today? February 9th. Ooh, pretty soon Valentine's. Love yourself, love yourself. It's all about loving yourself for right now. Yeah, don't wanna be catching any bacteria germs or whatever. 
Okay, so are we preparing our notes? Let me see notebooks. Tell me the money. For some of you guys, those notebooks came in handy. You guys actually did pretty well. One person got all correct. One person only missed one question, which is good. We got a B plus and we got two junk grades. Not too bad. Um, first thing, okay, so we're gonna say Antigone, let's at the very top, right? We're gonna be titling this Antigone scene two. Antigone scene two, let's call this the, the scene of pride, P-R-I-D-E, pride. Okay. What do we know about pride? Does anybody know anything about pride? Kahaleo Lani, give me some um, insight. What do you know about pride? Is it a good or bad thing? Can it be both? Tell me. Um, it can be both because if you have too much pride, like you like may think that you're like so much better than others. Okay. But it, what hap What what's the downfall of, or I guess what is the positives about having pride? Aiden, do you know? Confidence. Oh, confidence. Okay, you can have confidence when you have pride. What else, Kalahikiola? I was going to say confidence, but you stole yeah. it. What can you be prideful about? Name something. Money, wealth. Ooh, yeah. Right now, look at my dollar dollar bills, y'all. Okay, but what else? What else can be good pride, healthy pride? Caleb. Should be writing this stuff down, by the way. Like speaking? Speaking. Tell me why. Tell me why speaking speak speaking. Speaking would be um something that gives you some pride. Like if you have to go up and like present something to the class, that can be like nervous. So you get a better grade. Yeah, right. So um pride can bring you actually up to another level because you are doing it for the sake of maybe somebody or a, a group you represent, right? Like for example, if, if you guys play on like a team, right? Or if you're a cheerleader, right? When you put on that uniform, right? Kalahi Kiola, when you put on that cheerleader uniform, just joking, um, right? There's a sense of pride, you guys. Like you representing not the name on the back, but the name on the front, right? Caleb's like, I know, as soon as I get into that gym, I step into the gym, everybody has their uniform on, we look sharp, we're playing for the team, right? But you're also playing for a tutu lady in the crowd cheering, she don't know what she's cheering for, but you're playing because, you know, my grandma used to give me $5 for every three-pointer and $1 for every free shot. But I wasn't a hog cheese. I mean, I wanted to win. So, you know, if you're not on during a game, you got to like know when to pass the ball. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. I did get a, I did get some money though from playing my grandma bribe us. Anyway, pride, right? You do it for your family as well. So there are pluses and minuses to pride, right? I hope you guys wrote pride real big. Okay. For scene two. Okay, turn the page. Let's write Antigone scene three. Okay, I want you to draw um, two stick figures putting up their dukes. Okay, the father-son event of the season. Okay, so let's write down H for Haman and C for Creon. Also known to ninth graders as Crayon. Okay, so we have the father-son um, in scene three. They're going to beef it out. Okay. Whew. I also need you to draw out Antigone and Ismini together. Okay. Yep. 
with Creon. The three of them are going to. Okay, so lots of drama, lots of drama to, in today's reading. Okay, scene four, you figure it out. Scene four. So scene, um, sorry, scene three is the father son beef out. Scene four. You're gonna, it's gonna go pretty quickly today just because there's a lot of action going on. Yes. What was the first people? Creon and Haman. Haman. Yaman. Father son. Haman or Haman is the son of Creon. So if you need to write Haman, Yaman. That might help you because he's the sun man. Holy smokes. I'm hey done. <laughs> no, you can't in. No. Hey Dan. Also, let's talk about um, making a real world connection. So I don't care which side you on. You're right now 14, maybe 15 years old. It depends. Okay. For the rest of your life, you're going to hear about the second impeachment hearing trial in the Senate that started today. Yeah, we're going there. There are going to be some strong examples and non-examples of leadership that come up in Antigone, okay? Warnings from the course, warnings from the seer. His name is Tiresias, Tiresias, okay? I'm going to encourage you guys to pay attention to the news, maybe even to watch some of the um, impeachment hearings live so you can hear firsthand accounts of what happened, okay? Um, from both sides, you're going to learn, okay, whatever, okay, whatever it is. Why? Because eventually, you guys are going to be hopefully in some kind of leadership position, whether it's on the court, on the field, in a class, okay, further on in your lives when you're adults, okay, I need you guys to pay attention to what's happening in Antigone and in the trial. Everybody clear? Okay. You're gonna be asked, where were you when the, when the impeachment trial happened? Again, right? That's the big thing, yeah? Again. And it's like, huh, me? I was trying to teach my kids about Antigone and the qualities of leadership, okay? So there's a couple of things that I, I'm bringing up here. And that is when you see yourself. So as a leader, I want you guys to all go to scene two, question number one. Okay, scene two, question number one. What does this quote mean? No pride on earth is free of the curse of heaven. Okay, this is line 484. You're going to have to explain why this quote is important. Did everybody make a copy of this worksheet? Everybody's going to be turning in their own copy. Okay. But today, you guys are going to be working in small groups okay, to help each other answer these questions. Can? Okay. So um, what I'm going to have you guys do is you guys are going to read um, scene two by yourselves and then answer the questions together. Then go to scene three read by yourselves and then answer the questions together. Okay, so you just gotta check in, hey, where are you? Can we answer question one and two right now? Like, you're gonna have to talk to each other. Is that okay? Can you guys talk to each other? I'm hoping, okay. So um, let's go over uh, some of these questions. So scene two, question number one, right? What does this quote mean? I want you guys to try and figure it out. Um, I'm going to work with, you guys on a small group level to help you guys if you guys need the help. Okay, look at question number two. Why is Antigone upset with Ismini? We are specifically talking about scene two, so make sure you reference scene two. Okay, got that? 
You can go back into scene one and say it started from here, but now it's this, okay? And we know, right? Antigone and Ismini is your stereotypical what? Sister-sister relationship, right? Older sister, younger sister, come help me do this. No, I'm scared, right? Then what? Okay, so that's question two in scene two. Question three, explain the warning Creon receives regarding his decision to continue to punish Antigone. Identify specific lines and explain. So I need you guys to look at that, okay? Look at scene three. Everybody looking at scene three, question number one. You're gonna summarize Haman um, and Creon's confrontation. They're gonna tell each other off, okay? You need to summarize that. Number two, explain the metaphor of the trees and the sails. What is this talking about? Number two B, create your own metaphor for the qualities of a leader. So you're gonna find a picture, drop it in the left-hand side, and then you're gonna explain why you chose that as your metaphor. Can? This, okay, can you guys write in this box over here on your own? So everybody should have a different metaphor. Type that in there, please. So this is how I know that you guys are paying attention. If I don't see a on your own or whatever note to self, then I know you weren't paying attention when I grade it. Okay, number three for scene three. What is Creon's plan for Antigone, right? So now he's going forward and punishing her. What's the plan, man? Rubber band, man. Okay, and then scene four, you answer these two questions. Good to go? All righty. This is due... Um, before the next class. But today, what you're going to be doing is you have some time right now. Okay, and then I'm going to just help you guys out. So we have two breakout rooms. Um, hang on, we're gonna... Um, we have two breakout rooms, Hayden and Caleb, you're just going to be by yourselves. I mean, well, together. And then um, the three of you, Alicia, Kahaleolani, and Kalahikiola, you guys are together. Okay, so um, please work on these questions together. Okay, but you're going to turn in your own assignments. All right. We got this. We can work for like a good, I don't know, almost an hour. Okay. You should get all the way through scene three, okay? Ken, questions? Okay, go for it.
Don't forget to take notes as well, yeah? Hey guys, don't forget to take notes as well, yeah? Yeah. We read up to the end of second scene, right? Yeah, scene two. But take notes along the way because there's going to be some drama that drops real, like, immediately.
What line are you guys on? I am just finishing up scene two. So I'm awesome. Gonna... Cool, cool. Hayden, what about you? I'm on 410. Awesome. Are you guys done with scene two? What line are you guys on? I'm on like 420. Okay, good. What about you? Kalahi Kiola. I'm Paul. Oh, very good. You start answering the questions. Waiting. What is that? Waiting for my group to finish. Oh, you can start kind of answering the questions too already. Kahele Alani, what about you? Where are you? I'm on 465. Okay, good. Don't forget to take notes, okay? The sentry kind of is strong with Creon. Yeah, he kind of tells him off, which I think is really interesting. It's kind of like the Mandalorian. I didn't watch. I just, I just like to see Baby Yoda. But I mean, the Mandalorian is pretty cool. Kind of slow though. If you don't have, you know, anything to do. Or you can just watch like Vampire Diaries. I'm a grown woman. Sorry. <laughs> or like, um, WandaVision's cool. Who? It's on Disney Plus. WandaVision. Hey, hey, fin finish, finish your reading. I'm talking to Kalahi Kiola. Yeah, love this movie, Antigone. And I excel. That movie is great, too. Okay, you guys answering the questions now? Oh, you want us to go like by scene by scene? Yeah, because it's easier. So like, let's start with the first question. What does the quote mean? Yeah, so you guys talk about it. I'll just be here. Okay.
you guys can talk to each other. I don't care if you have the same answers, but you should come up with something together. It's okay. The problem is that I don't know what it is. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, yeah. You might have to read around the quote. Yeah, that's why I gave you the line. Mm -hmm. Oh, Caleb, I am seeing a pattern with the lines after it. You're talking about like, oh, uh, every it has something has a price, like mm. how they said, uh, the strange dreams of men, of men may bring them ghosts of joy, but as it draws, the walking embers burn them. So, like, they get. They get joy, but when they sleep, they get burned or something. I don't know. Oh, that can be like the curse of heaven, maybe. Like, mm -hmm. They also said that mortal arrogance transcends the wrath of Zeus. Mm -hmm. So being arrogant is worse than the wrath of Zeus. So is pride like arrogance? Yeah. So I think bad pride would be like arrogance, right? Like how we were talking about good pride versus bad pride. Because yeah. good pride would be like being confident. And then bad pride would be like being arrogant, thinking you're the well, best. If we don't have any bad pride, you're free of the wrath of the gods, basically, like the curse of heaven. So, yeah. Also, let's point out a specific line. You guys are so awesome. That is great. Okay, so find a specific line that talks about what is what is the the chorus cautioning someone about, right? What's the caution here? What's the word of caution? Good job. Uh, 
Um, okay. Um, have you guys answered uh, the first question? Well, it's hard. It is hard. Mm -hmm. What'd you guys come up with? I'm going to be so impressed. The other group figured it out. Don't text him. Yeah. yeah, I need you guys to figure this out. Don't act. No, 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 no. Turn around. Use your brains. You got one. Yeah, okay. One. Okay, so what do you guys think? What does this mean? So remember, I don't know. I'm pretty sure in eighth grade you were trained how to use the words around the line to help yeah. decipher. Am I right? It confused me even more. No, use a context. What they're talking this line, no pride on earth is free from the of the curse of heaven. So I need you to look like two stanzas up and then the rest of the stanza below that. What is this talking about? Make sure you grab like a specific quote, okay? Specific line. Something about arrogance, question mark. Maybe, yeah, why? Is Did it just... talking about like, well, like, the afterlife, kind of. Mm. On the right path. Is pride a good thing in this story? Uh. What is the role of pride in this story? Is it is it doing a? Is it does it have a positive function or a negative function? Mm. Okay, why? Tell me why ain't nothing but a heart. That's a good song. Okay. Kahele Lani, what do you think? The question. What is your answer for number one, scene two? Oh, I didn't finish it. I just said, but. Uh... What I put, I said that it's like, well, I thought that it meant like no matter how much pride you have, and then I didn't finish the sentence. Okay. No pride on earth is free of the curse of heaven. In meaning what? Are there repercussions? Are there outcomes to this? Yes. Okay, what is it? Talk about the story. Talk about the plot. Um, just Antigone's decision to save her brother at all costs. Good. Death. Okay, that might be it. Good. Add that to your response. Who else's dis decision at all costs is messing this story up? Creon. Okay, why? When he made, when he, what do you call it? Like a proclamation? Yeah, his decree, right? Decree. Hear ye, hear ye. No one will touch his body, right? Or you die, right? What's going to happen there? That's interesting. It's like an oxymoron, right? The curse of heaven. Isn't heaven supposed to be a great thing? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. What is that curse? Free of the curse of heaven, right? Um, I don't know. Is this the Elysian fields where the people who um, get to pay, you know, to the afterlife or whatever, they don't get to go, you know, to Hades. They get to go to the Elysian fields. What's a curse? Yeah. Okay, so just explain why this quote is important and then move on. Why is Antigone upset with Ismini? Total sister action right here. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Move on to number three, and then I'll check back with you in just a bit. Ken? Question number three is probably harder than question number one, by the way.
okay, why is Antigone upset with her sister? Because Ismini wanted to die with Antigone, like wanted to take the punishment with her. Okay, and what? But you well, need, you want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, but then Antigone says what? What does Antigone say? Ismini's like, sister, it's my fault too. Antigone says what? Antigone says she wants to die. Right, or... Antigone says she wants to die. And Ismini's like, me too. And then what does Antigone say to her? She does not deserve to die. Yeah, no, not you. I'm not giving you the satisfaction, right? So this oh, is a she total- didn't do anything. Right. You showed your true colors. You were a wussy when I told you to step up, right? So no, not you. You go away. You stay on earth. I'm leaving, right? Okay, so make sure you understand it because that's, that's some kind of like twisted thinking, right? No, I'm going to do the honorable thing. I'm going to die because my I don't care that my brother, um, my brother, whatever, that I broke the law. My brother needed a proper burial. And you, sister, you didn't do the right thing. So basically, you know, no, you get to live here. <laughs> I'm going. Isn't that such a sister move? That's such a sibling move. Like, no, you never like, I'm not giving you any more Cheez-Its. You know, it's just one of those things, okay? What about number three? Number three is harder than number one, but I think you guys can answer number three pretty good. Okay, so this, as you guys know, deals with the ending of each scene. You have the chorus doing the whole I told you so thing, right? So look, just before the scene two ends, there should be a warning, okay? So find it.
like lines and yeah, I'll, I like Antigon better. <laughs> I don't. That sounds weird. Antigon? Hi. <laughs> BB's Antigon and Crayon. Yes. <laughs> Wait, let, let me try to pronounce the other ones. Um, Polynesis. No, no, Polynesis. Polynesis. Mm. And then Ethiopies, Ethiopies, whatever. Ethiopia. Yeah. And then Heman, Yaman. Heman. Heman. Okay. How's it going? Did you guys find out uh, why Antigone is upset with Ismini? Because, because she claimed herself guilty? Who did? Ismini. Ismini, yes. Basically, what happened, right? Well, um, Creon dragged her in there. Right, and said, you, what? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then after guilty and she said yeah and then um um what's her name antigone um, antigone antigone yeah <laughs> okay. um got mad yeah and then went off i can't remember what she said i swear i just read it yeah Elani, what did she say what did antigone say to Ismini. Basically what? Summarize it. I, oh, that like Ismini didn't help her or something. So why is she acting like she's guilty? Right. Uh, what is it called? An accessory? Yeah, her partner in crime, right? Hey, sis, I need your help. You got to help me, right? And then um, she goes, no, I, I don't want to worry. I'm scared, right? Because Ismini is seen as the weaker sister, right? She weak sauce. And so when Creon drags Ismini and says, you, you are an accessory to this crime. And she was like, um, I will die with my sister. The sister pulls a sister move, right? And says what? Kala, say it. What does what does Antigone say to her sister? Basically what? Translate it for me in pigeon. Oh. Oh na, what? This is so funny. Yeah, this would be funny in pigeon. This would be funny in pigeon. We should rewrite it in pigeon. This would be funny. The whole thing. The whole yeah. thing. As you read it, you should be translating it in your head in pigeon, because then it's like way, way more fun. She's well, basically saying, Nasis, you on your own, right? Get it. What else? It's cold. It is cold. I'm freezing. They won't close the doors that are in front of me. Yeah, because you're supposed to have airflow so you guys don't catch COVID. Oh my gosh. Right in front of me. Yeah, you love how I flip my whole laptop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So what? Kalahi Kiola, what? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, listen to what you said. You shall not lessen my death by sharing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. You don't mm -hmm. deserve it. You stay on earth. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't help me. Why should you die? No. So this is total sister move, right? When you zoom out, it doesn't make sense. Why would anybody do that, right? They would want to save their sister in a good way. But she's like, no, you cannot. You got to stay home, right? Okay, let's move on to question number three. Explain the warning Creon receives regarding his decision to continue to punish Antigone.
What is the warning? Kahele Alani, do you know? Is that um, she was supposed to marry his son? Mm, no. So as you guys know, when each scene closes, right, there is an I told you so, or you better listen, right? It's that moment of reasoning, right, that comes up. So I need you guys to look toward the end of scene two and look to see what the warning is, right? So you might want to look like in the last stanza before the closing of scene two, okay? That's all the notes, the only hint I'm going to give you, okay? All right, find it. And then after you're done answering scene um, two, question three, move on and start reading scene three, can? Scene three is kind of short, so. How are you guys doing? Did you answer number three? Yeah, we're reading um, scene three. Oh, awesome. Um, what did you guys come up with for um, number three? I'm curious. The line um, 465 to 470. Okay. It's um where once the anger of the heaven has struck, the house is shaken forever. That nation rises behind each child like a wave cresting out of the black northwest when the long darkness under sea roars up and bursts, drumming death upon the wind with sand. Okay, and what does that mean? What is the warning? To um, Quran for being too arrogant, like he's they're wanting him for his arrogance. Okay, very good, very good. Um, there is another line that speaks about that, but that is a very good choice. Okay, so if you guys go to the bottom just before scene three starts, the last stanza before scene three starts, there is this line right here. I'm a Maybe you guys can find it. It's a very similar line um, lines to what you guys found. What is it? Do you guys see it? Right before scene three starts. Yeah, that one stanza just before scene three starts. Which line oh. says that pretty much the same thing what you guys said? Oh, uh, 
like the whole thing from 485 to 490? Um, maybe you can come up with like maybe two specific lines that talk about that whole arrogance thing. Now, if you're too arrogant. I like the first three lines. The strange chains of men may bring them ghosts of joy, but as they draw, the waking embers burn them. Mm -hmm. So like uh, their dreams, their personal dreams, may give them joy like for a short amount of time mm -hmm. but like say you're like sleeping in bed and you're thinking about it then you start to build up guilt after a while you know yeah nice okay also if you look at the line right under where you just selected right but as they drowse the walk the waking embers burn them right so that as like like as they like fall asleep they wake up and they get burned because the reality hits them, right? So same like what you're saying. And then it says what? Or they walk with fixed eyes as blind men walk. Is Creon blind? But does, is his arrogance blinding him? What about Antigone? Same. Maybe, right? She's sticking to the, the law of gods and she's like, she's feeling pretty good about herself. She's good with dying, right? Like I can't one go of those, wrong. Like, uh, people who, like, you know, I don't know if it's a good example, but like those guys who did the 9 11, they thought they were, you know, praising oh, God, yeah. but they were actually, you know, doing bad things. Right. Right. So what, what is that? Right. She's trying to be a martyr. Right. So you'll hear that phrase like, Oh, don't be a martyr. You know, well, maybe there's sometimes it, it you need to, but it depends. Like you can be a martyr for your beliefs, but if that ends up like killing somebody else, my goodness, does, is, does that work against you? you right. You find yourself in a predicament, I would think. Okay. So very good. You guys are amazing. Okay. So I think you guys have the rest of the time. You guys can um, continue to read. And then I'm going to close out class in about five minutes. Okay. You guys can go use bathroom for the next class or whatever. Good job. Good job, you two. Oh, wonderful. Yes, like, oh. I was on topic the whole time. I'm pretty sure you were. Wait, you want to see something? No. What, what a Debbie Downer. Oh my gosh. Okay. Kahele Olani, did you guys find the answer for question three? Last stanza. No. <gasps> what is that? Did you paint that? Ooh, but I could if I wanted to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. It's like the star chart for February. Oh, oh cool. Okay, so let's. We're all gonna go there. Let's go to um, the stanza just before. Where's my stuff? Just before scene three opens. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody there. That last stanza. Okay. Ridiculous. If I'm going to have to read this aloud to you, whatever. Okay. And T stroke. Yeah. So these are like the parts of when the chorus speaks. Anti strophe, strophe. And then there's another term for it. It's called the epod. The epod. So there's just these names, antistrophe, strophe, and the epode, they're just the parts of whatever the chorus does. I know. That's why I don't even mention it because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just the parts, beginning, middle, and end kind of deal. Um, let's look. So where am I? Okay.
I lost my place, darn it. Where am I? Collecting number 11. Okay. All right. So, um, find my page. How weird. Mm. Is class done? No. Why? Okay, here we are. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. You guys answer the question. Okay. So we are right here, right? Oh my gosh, that's scene two. Hang on. Scene two. We're going to over 80. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Having a brain fart. Hang on. Okay. So we, we start here. Okay. We talk about what mortal arrogance transcends the wrath of Zeus, right? What is worse than? the wrath of Zeus, right? They're alluding to what? Who is that? Is that Hayden? Yeah, he has to go to biology. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, class is over. Let me just stop the. I'm going to see you guys later. Okay, email me if you need help. Alicia, stay on for just one second because I need to talk to you. Okay, bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Alicia, are you going to do your IXL? I forgot about it. I emailed you so that you could meet with me yesterday. And I don't know, what, where were you yesterday? Here. OK, so how come you didn't meet with me? Because I didn't see the email. You need to check your email every morning. OK? And like multiple times throughout the day, because that's how I'm going to get in contact with you. Look at your grade. You have a 59%. It's like, no, we're doing this again. And then you're gimme, gimme. You didn't do it. OK, you got to do it. If not, your grade's going to be junk. Look at, you need to, I uploaded grades. You need to look at your grades. You are missing so much, so much, okay? So I want you to look at your case connect and then I want you to tell me what you're going to make up, right? So email me after you're done and then I'm gonna open the, the assignments that you would like to make up, okay? But they need to be done by like this Friday so that I can upload grades. Okay, because if not, you know what happens, you get your phone taken away or whatever, you get grounded. Do you get grounded? I don't think it works. Uh, no. I don't think it works. Yeah, I do get grounded, actually. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, then you need to shape yourself up. Whatever. Can you? Hmm. I'm having like a convert. I don't have kids, but I feel like you're like my long lost daughter. And I'm like, girl, you got to get going here. Like, okay. Yeah. Doesn't care anymore. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I will mommy you. Do your work and then email me. Email me. We're going to practice emailing each other. Email me what you want to make up. I would start with the 20 point assignments. Okay. You're not too far in the quarter to where, you know, it's to the point of no return. So you can make up this work. You're going to get missing points for it. I mean, late points for it, but at least it's better than a zero. Can? Okay, you tell me. Okay, email me by the end of today if you can. Okay? Bye.